Now let's have a look at the functional areas of the brain, which are usually present on the dominant side. So when you are looking on the lateral surface, we have seen the sulci already, the central sulcus and the lateral sulcus. The precentral gyrus acts as the primary motor cortex and the postcentral gyrus acts as the primary sensory cortex. As you can see, the motor cortex is always thicker than the sensory cortex. Then you have anterior speech area, Broca's area. In the inferior frontal gyrus, the pars triangularis and pars opercularis, these two together contribute to the anterior Broca's area, whereas the posterior end of the lateral sulcus, this will corresponds to Wernicke's area or the sensory speech area. And in the superior temporal gyrus along the posterior one third, you'll see a bilobal projection. This corresponds to the auditory cortex. It is known as Heschel's gyrus. And we have seen the calcarine sulcus in the medial surface. So on either side of calcarine sulcus, that will correspond to the visual cortex. So these are the functional areas that you need to remember. Coming to the motor cortex, in the precentral gyrus, the representation of any anatomical structure depends on the function it serves. As you can see, hip and trunk are having less representation compared to the hand or face. That is because of the function they serve. This is called as motor homunculus. And on imaging, you will consistently observe some areas, particularly the hand knob region. So in the precentral gyrus, you will appreciate a knob-like structure, a U-shaped depression that will correspond to your hand area and the paracentral lobule, which is located between the ascending ramus and marginal ramus of the cingulate sulcus on the medial surface, that will correspond to the leg region.